This week we celebrate Veterans Day. Veterans, guys, can't think of a more deserving group in all of America. Those who served in the past and those who are currently serving. And one of the causes they served for was our right to vote. This is election week, and I want to encourage everyone to go vote. If you're a legal voter in the United States, go vote. Even though it's the rut, go vote. If a cold front's bearing down on you where you are, get out of the tree stand and go vote. Veterans, thank you for this privilege. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconyx, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Dead Down Wind, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Blood Sport Arrows, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Caldwell, Hooks Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non-Typical Clothing, Howes Lubricator, Genesis No-Till Drill, Yamaha, Fourth Arrow, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and redneck hunting blinds. I have so many great memories at the family farm. At a young age, turkey and deer hunting became a passion of mine, and many of my greatest hunts have happened right there in Douglas County, Missouri. The farm is a working cattle farm, and the turkey hunting has been fantastic even at an early age. But the deer hunting, well, that's required a little extra work. The area is in cattle country. Most of the fields are made up of fescue pasture, while a lot of the woodlands have been grazed by cattle as well, leaving sparse food for the wildlife. This may be why a lot of my early hunts involved deer drives, long hikes, and unfilled tags. Trying to increase the amount of native vegetation growing in the area, as well as improve the visibility from the stand, we went in this past winter and cleared out the cedars and allowing more sunlight to reach the forest floor. Knowing the opportunity of having a great stand in the timber close to bedding, now we just needed a hitless buck in the area. Sticker 8's a four and a half year old buck that we've been tracking across the farm over the last couple of years. Matt and I had a great encounter with this buck during the first week of season last year. This year we followed Sticker 8 from Velvet to Hard Antler and tracked his movement throughout the entire farm. As mid-October rolled upon us, Sticker 8 started showing up near a stand Matt and I hunted last fall we called Dollheart. With the recent cold front passing and the wind switching back out of the south, Matt and I grabbed our gear and headed to Dollhart. This was the first time in the stand after our work this past winter, and it was exciting to see the changes. It's October the 22nd this afternoon. Matt and I are at my family farm, little spot just west of our food plot we call Amarilla. We did a little TSI work in here and cut out some invasive species and other species that were choked up too much. So there's a lot of logs on the ground. Deer are loving it. There's a lot of native browse coming up that grew this past growing season. So a lot of food in here as they work from the bedding 
headed up to the main food plot. So it's October 22nd, so you never know what can happen. We'll see what is in store for us tonight. As the shade reached the forest floor, Matt spotted the first deer. As we peered through the brush, he noticed antlers and a small kicker off the right G2. It was sticker eight. Sticker 8 was the top hit lister on the farm, and he was slowly working into range. Watch this buck move through the timber. He's completely comfortable, and he's loving the native browse. We watch Sticker 8 step by step move closer and closer. Finally, he seemed to be headed towards an opening. It was time to shed the nervousness and prepare for the shot. Ready? Smoked him tonight. still be more proud of that deer right there <sighs> on the family farm Matt says there's a buck back here behind us we turn around and it is the stickers eight and he comes up in slow motion eating on the native brows that we came in to try and basically let it grow more and he was feeding on the natives just like we wanted to get it any better than that? Uh, it could not. He is down 10 yards from where I shot him. He had no idea what happened. Feeding a deer with the native brows, doing the prescribed fires, planting the food plots, doing all the work, and then getting to harvest in that fall. There is not a better feeling as a hunter and as a wildlife manager, so. Oh! <sighs> Oh, your brother. Get your brother. We're going to enjoy the heck out of this one. Stickers is down. Really awesome. He came up 40 yards, center punched him down in 10 yards. We did all that work and it came together. Exactly. Exactly. Look at that deer right there. Mainframe eight, he's got this little kicker off the back. That's why he's called sticker eight. Holy cow. 
Oh my gosh, I feel... <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh. Here he is. The sticker eight. Oh my gosh. What a deer. Look at that. I don't know how wide he is. He's a lot wider than I thought he was. He's got great twos. Not bad threes either. And pretty good beams. Wow. A little bit of kicker back here. I couldn't believe it. Years of hard work, sweat, blood, and tears for managing mature deer on a family farm had finally paid off. What a great time for Matt, Chad, and myself to celebrate. We had drawn up the plan last year. And we got to watch it all unfold with Sticker 8. Yay! <laughs> Put that tailgate down. We're still in ancient. We don't get to get up here and hunt here as much, but when I do and I'm successful, I gotta share it with some people that are very special to me. Headed to my grandparents. Grandpa is 92 years old, World War II vet. A lot of who I am is because of him and my grandma, so every time we have a great hunt, we usually go share it with them. So we're headed to their house now. Can't wait to show it to them. <laughs> and it was on the farm? Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. There you go. My goodness. <laughs> he is a pretty good one, isn't he? Wow. Yeah. Hunting the family farm is all about the memories, the relationships, and sharing the success with others. It's a, it's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> we celebrated late into the night, and we can't wait to get back to the family farm to plan our next project. Adam's success is a great reminder that even small habitat projects can yield big results. <laughs> Recently, my dad was able to tag a buck with his crossbow, and that seemed to be the best medicine since the chemo. Got him all fired up, so now he's out fall turkey hunting. Missouri has a fall shotgun turkey season during the month of October. Our food plots are doing very well, and there's no acorns, so I knew it was only a matter of time. If dad was patient, he'd see some turkeys while sitting on the edge of a plot. Even after a few sets with no turkeys in range, Dad was still eager to go every time I gave him a call. During Missouri's statewide youth season, I hunted with Ray and Matt took Dad turkey hunting. They opted to go to a plot we call Blue Ho. We had a fairly good pattern of turkeys moving through there during the afternoons on a Reconyx camera. Well, here I am again. Turkey hunting on the boys' place. I love it. There's nothing like hunting. I'm 86 years old and I enjoy every minute of it. Got to get one in my sights and I'm gonna do the best and lay the boom to him. Grant has been good to me. I appreciate him letting me hunt. I really love it. I'll do the best I can to try to get one. Thank you for everything, son. After they'd been in the hay bale blind a while, Matt noticed a group of toms at the far end of the plot. Are they one coming on this side? No. We're gonna shoot those ones. You shoot the first one up there. That one up there, he's behind us now. With two tags to fill, and after the first one flopped, Dad wisely stayed on the Winchester. Dad waited patiently, picked his shot, second Tom's down. Good job, good job. This is another great example of where the field pod really helped out hunters here at the Proving Grounds. At 86, if Dad would have had to held up the shotgun during all that time, Probably would have been a little bit tiring, although he was so pumped up, he might have tried to do it. But it paid extra dividends as Dad was able to stay steady, waiting for the second bird to offer a clean shot. It feels fine, because I've been hunting two or three days to get him. And 
who would have thought just at dark they come walking up the field and they spread out this light for me to get two shots. I sure appreciate the sun letting me hunt and I do the best I can. Man, 86 years old, still shooting turkeys. He's doing all right. I would say so, sir. I don't think those turkeys have much more to say. <laughs> They're pretty good turkeys. They're great turkeys. And you were right. You had just leaned over and asked me what time they're flying up. And I think I'd said maybe 15, 20 minutes we've got left. And I looked back to the right and down the food plot, here they come. Boy, I was about to give up on them. We're going to take these birds back and get them cleaned up. All righty. Thanksgiving's just around the corner. I think we're set. Okay. I really admire Dad's energy. At 86, he's eager to go hunting every time I give him a call. It'll be rifle season soon here in Missouri, and he's got another tag in his pocket. If you'd like to see some of the outtakes and footage we just don't have time to share during the episode, check out the Clips tab at GroinDeer.com. Fall is a great time to get outside and enjoy creation. So you know what? It's important every day, no matter what the conditions are, to slow down and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.